This stuff is sponsored by Nishmas Kela Zelda Bas Avram. Shmuel states that the halacha follows Rabbi Yossi, that the renter cannot benefit from the owner's animal. He disagrees in the first Mishnah as well. The custodian cannot collect the fines if the thief is apprehended, even if he paid and did not swear. However, Shmuel is in doubt if the halacha follows Rabbi Yossi in the first Mishnah as well. Rabbi Lazar and Rav Yehuda hold that the halacha follows Rabbi Yossi even in the first Mishnah, even where the custodian paid. Rabbi Yochanan holds that Rabbi Yossi agrees in the first Mishnah because he at least agreed to pay before the thief was apprehended. In the second Mishnah, the renter agreed to nothing. Now we move on to a new Mishnah. The first law of the Mishnah is where a thief claims he stole a mana from two possible victims and he does not know from which one. He pays them both. The Gemara contrasts this case from the third case of the Mishnah called Mana Shlishi. We learned in the first parak two deposited money with a third party, one 200 and the other 100, both claiming he is the one that deposited the 200. Both receive, according to the Chachamim, a hundred, and the other remains with the court until it is ascertained who it belongs to. The difference is, this Mishnah discusses a thief who the court imposes payment to both victims to discourage him from stealing again. In the case of Manashlishi, the third case of the Mishnah, we're talking about money deposited, not stolen. The second law is where a banker claims he received the deposit of a mana from one of two fathers of two sons, and he does not know which father of which son. Again, the halach is he pays them both. This is not a case of theft. There is no reason to find the banker. Since in the second case, they deposited their money separately, it is like a banker receiving money in two envelopes. He should have been more careful to know who gave him what. However, even if depositing separately, in that case does not always create a liability for the banker, such as where the deposits were made without his knowledge. The Gemara later gives an example of three animals placed in a shepherd's flock, not in his presence. In that case, he is not responsible to know whose is who each animal belongs to. The third case is where they deposited the money together, Manashlishi, which is like in one envelope, since neither mentioned the amount, and they came together, seemingly trusting one another. In that case, he wasn't necessary to know how much each one deposited. And he wasn't careful to know, because he assumed that each one of them trusted each other. This law is contrasted. The law, the first law, actually, the Mishnah, discussing the case of Gezeila, is contrasted from a Mishnah in Yavamas. One stole from five different alleged victims and does not know from which one, and each victim claims he is the one. According to Rabbi Tarfan, the halacha is in that case, he keeps the money, Bezdin, until they resolve who the victim is. There, he wants to pay only the one he stole from. In our Mishnah, where the halacha is, he pays both, his intent is, Lot says, Yedei Shamayim. There is an argument as to what is his response to the other claimants, in the case of where five claim that he stole from him. According to Rabbi Yehuda, in the name of Rav, he says the thief kept quiet. We do not apply the principle of shtika koda in this case, that his silence is an admittance to all of them because his silence only indicates each one could have been his victim. 
Rav Masna, in the name of Rav, says he cries out that he does not recognize any of them, otherwise his silence would be construed as an admission to each one. According to Rabbi Akiva's opinion of that Mishnah, that he must pay each victim, we see that misfeik of mafkina mamona, that even where it's a suffix, you collect from the one in possession. When in doubt, we extract money from the one in possession. In this case, each victim is claiming a tainus bari, that he owes them the money. His claim, however, that of the thief, is only a shema. Bari v'shema, bari adiv. However, where a house, for example, collapsed, killing a mother and a son, where we do not know who died first, regarding inheritance laws, Rabbi Akiva holds the money remains with the one in possession because both set of heirs are, make a claim of Shema. The Gemara concludes, by virtue of the Mishta demonstrating the machlokas of Rabbi Yossi and the Rabbonin in two cases, one of money and one of utensils, they argue regardless of the value difference of the two claims. Uh, finish you finished it went to the next I don't know why. I Battery? No, no, it's in it's good then. Okay, so this one now is... Uh, you want to do Pashas Noach? Yeah.